Marilyn Faustino Montenegro is an interior stylist, professional model, TV host, and empowered mom. After a successful career in modeling with the Professional Models Association of the Philippines, she went on to establish her name in the world of interior design, where she pursues her passion in letting her creativity flow. She continues to be an inspiration to many through her love for her children and ability to do what she does. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of In Love With Me, where we feature inspiring individuals who will share their amazing stories. I am your host, Mafe Yunon Velasco, and for this series, our topic is passion and purpose. For this episode, we have an empowered woman, interior designer, model, host, and mom to motivate us to take action. So without further ado, let's welcome the beautiful and amazing Marilyn Faustino Montenegro. Hi, Marilyn. Hello, Mafe. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on this new show of yours. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. It's so good to catch up with you and see you again. It's been yeah. quite a time. But um, I have been admiring you from a distance, seeing your business grow and also seeing your lives, um, staying fresh as usual. Um, you haven't change one bit you have to share your secret but anywho before you do that um can you please please share with everyone on how you are the inspiring and empowered woman that you are today oh wow well, first of all thank you for all the compliments <laughs> and you are just the same really you haven't changed you look great and you have how many children so many children <laughs> And um, you homeschool all of them. So, wow. <laughs> Hats off to you also because I do homeschool and I only have two. But you have how many now? Five, six? Um, they are a total of six. But um, yes. the eldest one graduated. So he's already on his own um, in college. But someone's homeschooling again now. But um, it's nice to have older siblings, I guess, so they can help. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So... Um, well, going back to your question, I think um, I really just was able to get where I am because I was not afraid to grow. And, um, you know, when you make a mistake, it's really not the end of it. Mistakes are opportunities for you to grow into something or um, learn something new and make more the most of what you can be discover what else you can do what else you can be and um just it, it's really uh an eye-opener actually because you then realize oh okay i'm not good at this but then i can move on to the next or okay i failed but what can i do i can try even harder and so i guess what i'm trying to say is i've done so many different things career-wise um, ever since I graduated from college. So I graduated interior design. I studied that. And um, after school, I worked with a couple of the best interior designers in the country. But I also got into modeling. And it started off with television commercials, which then made its way into rap modeling. And that's how I met you. And then, of course, all the print print ads, and glossy magazines. Um, from there, I did TV hosting, hosted a couple of TV shows, um, got to be judged for an interior design, an international interior design TV show, actually. And then um, put up my own blog alongside with my business and a couple of maybe video shows on social media. And, um, of course, also my homeschooling, right, as a mom. So there are just so many things that um, we've done. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you know and you understand what I'm trying to say. is 
it's really just go for it <laughs> go for it and have fun and try to be the best that you can be so you know like you said we met during modeling um i was always like in awe with with marlene and just what she's been doing um through the modeling um career like she said she was on the tv she was with magazines and i was just like oh, God, this girl you know um she was uh very popular so if ever guys you have magazines at home or you know come across on youtube those like icons and just all the freshness uh uh brands marlin was there you know and she didn't set the bar high so with that you know what would be your your advice to let's say models or aspiring commercial models that want to be as successful as you what would be uh the need to prepare or to know for them to have a good career in, in modeling? Well, modeling um, comes with different avenues. So you have to know what kind of model you want to be. Uh, at the very beginning, I took a step back and I looked at all the models who were seniors or older than me and I kind of like um, said okay this girl is doing amazing she's this and that this girl she has a different career path modeling wise or so to speak a different avenue but um, this is how she wanted to brand herself and so I took a step back and I decided for myself what I want to do and what I want to be known as and um, along with the values and principles in my own life I formed the conclusion that I wanted to um, be known as a woman with substance, not just for my sexy body, not just um, all. It, it wasn't really about appearances for me, but it was also about like um, passion, women empowerment, um, the brains and the, the soul really, instead of just the outward appearance. And so with that, I chose to, I learned to choose the brands that I endorsed carefully. Mm -hmm. And I knew that the beauty products would pay higher. And so that's sort of where I, what I, what my goal was. I knew what brands gave you a better image. And I also knew that that meant that I had to decline um, certain cover shoots or certain um, uh, pictorials or brand endorsements that would not coincide with the path that I was choosing. And so I wanted a clean image because I knew that that was what was pleasing to God and what my values and principles resonate with. Mm -hmm. And so my advice would be know what kind of um, model you want to be. And if you've decided, then go for it with all that you have. And um, just really try to be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to add to that, I think um, uh, with you learning your values and, and just knowing the industry, I think you have to thank TMAP for teaching us the values and, and how to be yes. disciplined and how to prepare. So can you share with everyone how you were introduced to TMAP and how you started being a member? Sure. So we actually entered PMAP at the same time. Um, I was actually doing like, well, I, I was doing TV commercials already and a few print ads here and there. <laughs> And I remember there was one um, show and the president at that time invited me to be part of PMAP, but I felt unsure and I wasn't really ready yet. And so I was just, because um, I was still in school and school was really also my focus. And, um, you know, whenever I'd had, I've had, I had free time, I would take on small modeling projects here and there, but it wasn't until after college where I felt that I was really ready. And so um, Mirza Sison encouraged me to join one of the PMAP tryouts. 
and oh, what is it called? The trial? I think that's more of like something for sports. Um, that's a, yeah, a go see there. Um, so I attended the, the go see, and that's where we met, right? Yeah, so we met at that go see, and at that time, the result that I got, the feedback that I got was yes, you are a probationary member, meaning you are on. Um, trial because you have to lose a few more pounds <laughs> and so I remember I exercised every day I watched what I ate to lose that that maybe last five or ten pounds and then from there I started doing a couple of shows here and there yeah until I became uh, an officer uh, of PMAP what yeah, so it was um, it's actually fun. That's so funny because uh, somebody's asking here, Marlon, why didn't you try beauty pageants before? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I have a story to tell you. Um, at that time, I had so many people wanting me to join and it was all set. So Jackie Aquino was the catalyst and he said okay Randy Ortiz is going to make your gown Chachel Hosson's going to do your makeup and Isa Aga, Tita Isa Gonzalez is going mm -hmm. to introduce you to Miss Stella Araneta and so sad to say I am um, I mean it's, it's not really sad to say but my parents didn't really want me to join and my boyfriend at that time didn't want me to join and so I didn't follow my gut feel or I didn't follow my dream. Like, I think there was one day where like, okay, they said no, but then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. So I said, okay, I'll go, I'll go. But then at the last minute, I backed out and I just had to message Tita Isa and I said, I'm sorry, but I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't go. So we canceled the go see to go meet Miss Dalla Araneta. And so it never happened. <laughs> but then again, of course. Um, so but then again. Blessings um, will came your way. Yes. There is a purpose for everything. <laughs> there is still a Mrs. Philippines, Marilyn. <laughs> but regardless, you know, I think you're blessed with what your career has, um, you know, transpired um, now that you are a professional interior designer. Can you share on how that transpired from modeling um, to having your family or you've always had the business, is, is that right? Yes, I've always had the business. So as soon as I graduated interior design, I worked with Ito Kish and with Buji Layu. They're one of the best designers in the Philippines. But shortly after that, I, um, I got my own interior design projects here and there. And that was when I decided to be adventurous and go for modeling. And so I just um, went for it and joined PMAP. And I even like, oh, before PMAP, you know, and Mirza knows this, I went into the Summit Media office and I submitted my photos. And I said, how can I try out to be on print? right? Like a fashion model or a beauty model for the beauty magazines. And so after that, shortly after that, um, I got into Candy Magazine, to Cosmo, and I won the preview cover girl contest. And um, so I was actually doing interior design projects alongside modeling. And I had my company already. And so things just got um, all fell into place by means of referrals. I would get referrals from my current clients and it got everything rolling with regards to my interior design career. Mm -hmm. From then on, I was blessed enough to be able to merge modeling and interior design because I got a couple of TV shows wherein I was um, uh, an interior design host or an interior designer for that TV show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're a judge, right? You're a judge for Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so just last year, I was the judge for 
um, a season of the Apartment TV, which is an international production, and it was shown on table, t- cable TV. So that was really fun. Wow. So how did you feel when they called you up and you were going to be part of this international um, platform on just sharing your passion? I felt it was really exciting. I felt so excited and um, humbled that I was selected and I had to fly to Malaysia to shoot it. But um, it was just an amazing experience because I love talking about interior design, especially in front of the camera. It reminded me of all the TV shows that I did a couple of years back with, back then, ABC5, um, QTV11. Oh my gosh, like really old networks, right? So, uh, and the most exciting part of it all was that I was co-judges with the top interior designers, <laughs> interior design celebrities, like on TV. They're like the best of the best. And I was alongside them. But I was like genuinely so engaged and interested because it's um, naturally what I do. <laughs> and like you said, you know, the passion... Um, when you're able to talk about it naturally, that's what people like to see. And that's probably yes. the reason why they, you know, um, offered that opportunity for you. So, you know, going into interior design, because of course, I think a lot of families are working from home now, doing homeschooling. What is your advice for, let's say, how to keep it simple, um, not overthinking? Like, do we need to really refurbish everything or can we make things work? what we have at home first and foremost my (laughs) advice is you need to declutter you will be surprised at how new your entire house will look like if you declutter and just get rid of like maybe 60 to 70 percent of your belongings (laughs) because seriously guys you don't need all that stuff right i mean look at us now we're living in the times of the coronavirus where we're forced to stay at home and the things that we buy are limited. We haven't gone shopping in a while. I I mean, I haven't bought like a new top or new shoes in a while. And so it just got me thinking that we really don't need all of this. And your house will look so much better if there's less clutter in it. Mm -hmm. And if everything is actually pleasing to the eye, it will inspire you. It will lessen your stress. It will make your mind less cluttered, actually. So if you can go declutter later, now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was the case, you know. I think first month, um, everybody was declaring. Everybody was giving things away or reselling yeah. or just uh, donating. Um, but I think there, sh- there can be another wave of that since... You know, like you said, it, it, it does feel nice to declutter um, your house and your mind at the same time. Because for me, I am simple as less. I was it less is more. That's, that's how yes. I always, always think of things. Even with just thinking about what you want to do or what you want to eat. You just keep it simple. But exactly. it, does, it does help when there's not much things. I mean, for me, I have a big family, so it's like, come on, guys, do you really need that? <laughs> you know, with all the toys, with all the books, and of course, condo living is not. Um, you know, it's 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 tougher when you have a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what do you you know, like you said, uh, a lot of things we don't need, a lot of things that um, we store is just really collecting dust. So. Um, for you, what were the first things that you let go? Um, I actually, uh, I'm coming up with an online course for this. Yeah. And what I really do is I declutter one room at a time. And I start with the bedroom. Because once you have cleaned your bedroom and you wake up every day to a whole new scene, in your bedroom, like everything is neat and tidy, you actually get encouraged to declutter even more and to style your home even more. So for instance, in the bedroom, I would start with the night table. There's so many things in your night table, right? So you have, you probably have expired medicine, like uh, maybe all this um, body creams and lotions that you don't really use. And then 
from there, you can move on to your clothes, of course, the shoes that you haven't used in over six months, and probably the bags that you don't really use anymore, and the tops that you don't use. You know, you can start decluttering that. And then from then on, move to the bathroom. You have bottles and bottles of shampoo and conditioner, makeup that are probably expired already, and you don't need those. And then, you know, you get the whole picture, right? You move on to the kitchen, to other parts of the house. And once you've lessened everything, that's when you begin to organize. Mm -hmm. So you organize them into containers. What I say is that everything needs to have a home or a box or a drawer. Because if it's just left on the table for your plane, for your eyes to see, it's actually clutter. You know how you have a buffet table and on top of the buffet table, there are like bottles of ketchup mixed with medicine and probably another bottle of this, a book, a pile of paper. It's just so cluttered. Mm -hmm. But if you learn how to organize and keep things in a pretty basket or a pretty box or in the drawer or inside the furniture, ca inside the cabinets, then you can now begin to style your your space and put decor because you can't put decor when you have clutter right sure. it's it won't go so that's that's what i teach in my blog and what i'll be coming up with in the online classes my gosh you want me to go home and clean now <laughs> i'm just thinking about <laughs> all my shelves that's the thing it's like you know you want to clean and then now you kind of like force okay i have extra time to just make this nice and easy so that when I'm focused on my work, I'm not also thinking about the mess. Um, and speaking of that, um, I have a question here for you. What is your favorite part of the house to work on? I guess you said uh, that. My favorite part of the house would be the living room because there's so many things you can do in the living room. I love styling the coffee table. So you can actually tell a story through your coffee table. Um, you know, they're like, you can put a tray, you can put books, you can put candles, you can put plants on the coffee table, and you can change the look of the living room simply by changing your cushions or the throw pillows, right? You can make it look um, like it's suited for autumn if you use a certain color and print of throw pillows and then if you want to go summery you can make it tropical and use tropical flowers and change a little bit of the decor but um there's so many things you can do in the living room goodness i love it i'm sure hans is so happy that he comes home to like a different look of his house every day he's probably like oh. i hope so <laughs> i think he's <laughs> Yeah, but he's getting now, used to it, but yeah. <laughs> but you have two two, um, two kids, um, and how do you help them or guide them on keeping things tight? Because that's probably my yeah my challenge, and a lot of moms' challenges with their children. Yeah. So, ever since they were kids, I encouraged them and taught them to pack away before bringing another set of toys out and so that the playroom isn't entirely covered with toys so if they are playing with the lego and they want to move on to playing with play-doh they need to pack away lego first mm -hmm. and i think um, they know that because uh it's it's a as a mom you constantly just find yourself reminding them right oh, pack away uh, put this away but it, it's normal, but my kids are really neat and tidy. And I guess that's because they see the example and they see that I am too. And so they know that that's what my their parents want and expect of them. Yeah. Can you share? Because you, you just have this, um, you're oozing with confidence. You're always motivated. Can you share with everyone on who helped shape you and how did you make you have... Um, you know, people that you look up to that uh, we can research on and also and learn from <laughs> what you did? Okay, well, there's no one single person. There are a couple of people that I admire and um, it comes in seasons. Like for a while, I was 
really into like maybe Martha Stewart, of course, right? And then there's even Oprah. I grew up watching Oprah because my grandmother would watch her on television. <laughs> and then um, from then on, there are all these other celebrities that you look up to, like maybe Heidi Klum. And here in the Philippines, you know, there's Tweety. And then um, right now, I am on Instagram a lot. So I follow a couple of celebrity uh, bloggers and one of the ones that I love is Athena Calderon mm -hmm. so she does everything from interior design to cooking and um, those are the people that give me inspiration mm -hmm. so what's your definition of me time huh? <laughs> decorating <laughs> yeah no, well, before the pandemic, I used to love getting massages. So I used to get massages once a week. And I haven't gotten that since, what, March, right? Um, so aside from the massages, it would be my workouts. I've gotten used to working out every day, just 30 minutes a day. And I think that's, that's precious time for me. But I also like to maybe listen to uh, an audiobook or watch Netflix that's a, like a super special time when I can watch Netflix because it doesn't happen very often. I, I start a show and then before I know it, oh, I need to put the kids to bed. So I need to pause the movie in the middle of it. And it's just so annoying because I never get to finish the show like straight, right? But that's me time. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, during, of course, um, people may say that we have more me time during this this uh, you know challenging time. But for you, what would be something new that you've learned about yourself during this quarantine period, lockdown period? Something new. Um, I guess it would be really having to uh, stay away from all the noise. Because sometimes social media, the news on Facebook, it can get so um, stressful. Mm -hmm. And it can really make you angry, you know, the government and all that. And so there are times when I feel like my stress is here or my, my negativity is here. I really erase the Facebook app from my phone. I leave it on my iPad. But then I'm not on my iPad as much as I am on my phone. And so that really helps. And I've also learned to mute toxic chat groups. So when there are chat groups that just talk about the virus all the time or, you know, I mute that. And so that was a big help because you're not always looking at it and having to read negative news. And um, they're just these are just things that you need to do because you really need to Make a conscious effort to stay positive. At the beginning of the day, you know, really count your blessings and be thankful for what you have. And um, be thankful that you are with your children. Even if you live in a condominium, we have this or that. And life can still be purposeful and happy. Yeah. No, I agree with you. You know, just staying away from the noise um, does help. I mean, especially... You wear many hats. You're a mom. You're a wife. You're you're, par you're probably the one who's always organizing everything for everyone. So um, to lessen the stress, of course, uh, keep happy thoughts. And and with that, it always always helps to just ignore certain things. And I know that um, right now you guys are fresh air. Lucky for you, you are you know where you are, and um, I I'm so glad to see you guys all safe. Um, so, you know, during this period, I know you have ongoing projects. Like you said, you have a workshop coming up. So, do you want to invite everyone to that and where they can find you? Yes. Um, you know, my, my iPad is running low on battery. So, <laughs> just and plug it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Bear with me. It's okay. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah. So, Marlon is about to share where you find her although i will have her social media her website link and where her blog um, links are on this captured so that you can find her there too but marlene i guess she's ready now to share with you what is in store for for the next uh, month or so 
Okay, so my blog is called MarylandStyles.com. It's mostly about interior design. Although if you go through the search, you find a lot about organizing, about styling the home. And um, with that, I have an Instagram that's called Maryland Styles on Instagram. And that's where I am most active on. I post anything and everything about lifestyle from homeschooling, motherhood, beauty. I do a lot of um, beauty, makeup tutorials, and skincare tutorials. I also do a little bit of cooking. And um, I also have a Facebook page called Maryland Styles. So you can PM me there and that's where you can see me and that's where you can watch my stories because um yeah i post a lot of everyday normal life <laughs> on my instagram i am coming up with an online course because i believe that now while we are at home you know because of the pandemic i believe that if you are able to live in the space that is inspiring and not cluttered and not chaotic then you will have less stress in life and you would actually feel more calm and more composed and so as an interior stylist i want to empower people and, and um, build the confidence in them to discover the interior designer within themselves so that yeah. even if they don't have access to um the services of maybe a designer or an architect and what have you, they can do the fixing around the house themselves and they can declutter and they can organize so that they can somewhat, maybe, you know, it will help them at this time during the pandemic. Yeah, that, that will be really helpful for everyone. Um, of course, uh, we want education all the time, guys, you know, you. The learning does not stop so with that since you're at home anyway you might as well learn how to make it um more of a positive environment for you guys to live in as well as work and for the kids to to learn uh with their school so you know follow marlene because i'm always inspired i'm always watching her her ig um your IG videos with the, you know, cleansing, even cleansing. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's making me want to clean my face right now. And, you know, this, um, the the tips and the advice of how to uh, make your home a better one. So before we wrap up, uh, Marilyn, can you please share with everyone, of course, we know we're, we're in this challenging time, on your words of wisdom, on how people can stay hopeful and also motivated to know that there's still more opportunities to come their way. Okay, um, really, well, you know, I haven't shared it, but really what helps me is putting my faith in the Word of God, in Christ, knowing that my Creator is actually in control and taking care of me has helped me so much. And um, I talk to Him, I pray, but at the same time, I listen to Him. And how do we listen to Him? We listen to Him through the Bible. And so... I make time to meditate and to just calm myself down through reading the Bible and learning about what God has to say to us all. So that's like a big help for me. And um, aside from that, thinking positive, purposely driving away the negative thoughts and pushing it away and saying, um, no, I'm, I'm not going to listen to that negative voice that is telling me that I am worthless or telling me that I can't do this or telling me that I'm sick, you know? So it's really being intentional in how we live our lives so that we can live life I totally agree with you, Marlene. Thank you for that. I know that people are inspired with what you said. And, you know, please, guys, visit her social media because you will feel inspired. Um, this this woman is, is amazing. And I love the fact that um, you shared all your tips. I mean, I'm sure you can talk on and on about interior design. I have so many questions. And I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions. So don't, um, you know, guys, visit uh, Marlene's 
Olivia, if you have any other questions or even just advice um, about life, modeling, um, interior design, I'm sure Marlon is more than happy on answering any of your questions. So to take home, guys, like what Marlon said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to grow. So if you want to achieve something, research, know your values, um, know the people that you should learn from, ask them questions, or research about them. You know, um, Marlene shared that she knew her values and she wanted to be um, a woman with substance when it came to modeling. So you understand, understand yourself, understand what, how you want to be respected by others. And then that's how you're able to, I guess, determine on what kind of modeling or even a career that you want to achieve. And then, um, you know, the less clutter we have, the more, I guess, at peace, the more that we can think clearly. And so I encourage you guys to declutter straight after the show and then maybe come back and watch the show again so that you can get um, and absorb what Marlene has shared earlier. So with that, guys, thank you, Marlene. I really appreciate your precious time away from your family to be with us, to inspire everyone, most especially at this time. So thank you, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Congrats on this new series. You also are <laughs> a woman. And I want to say to all the viewers, was that Junriel? Was yes, who tuned in, Junriel <laughs> and Carla. Thank you for tuning in and supporting. Um, watch out for our next episode. And so with that, actions speak louder than words. And thank you for tuning in in this episode of In Love With Me. Thanks, Marilyn. Thank you for watching and love of me series.